Hello, hi everyone. It's Mary and it's June 9th, 2023. It's 624 Eastern Time and local time is 1224 here in Waikiki, Hawaii. And I traded a couple of stocks today. At the open, I traded NEO as well as COIN. I have a separate video regarding NEO and COIN and with regards to arrange orders. So what I did since I cannot be stuck in my trading station is I place my order in NEO as well as in COIN and I put a range order. So what is a range order? Range order is you have two orders and one gets canceled, whichever comes first. So you have the stop loss and you have the profit or the targeted price. What are the advantages and disadvantages of having your range order having a range order then you have the capacity to be away from your trading desk for me i needed to go out in the sun so i have that range bound order where two things are there stop loss and the profit target so advantages is you don't have to be stuck in your trading station disadvantages is let's say like what happened to me with coin i am like short of 25 cents of getting filled i was up already by 2500 but just because it did not go to the price that i was waiting for it to go which is 54 i think the highest that it went to was around 53.80s so i was short by 25 30 cents so i did not get to fill but I was already up because I was just looking at my, my recording, my YouTube, and already up by 2,500, did not get to profit on that. And I just closed my position manually at the post market. Now with the NEO, I got stopped out. It reached my stop loss. And with what my order was is a limit order. So it got me filled for a loss. So advantages is you don't get to be stuck in your trading station disadvantages is if the price is short by a couple of cents then you're not going to get filled or you're not going to uh, make profit out of those amounts that is already in your unrealized um, profit just because it did not get to that exact price that you were waiting for so what I did today was a bit different because I usually don't trade pre-market as well as post-market. Those are the times that is what we call dead times. There's not a lot of liquidity. There's not a lot of traders who's trading, especially on a Friday night or Friday afternoon. And also, since there's not a lot of volume, not a lot of vol vol um, volatility, you're not going to be expecting a lot of movement. So unless you're able to spot on which stock is really moving, then you're just going to be trading, like waiting for the paint to dry. Um, so let's start off with what happened in the morning and what transpired to the trades that I did. So for NEO, I got a loss there of 1700 I did started my position, a big position in NEO, just because I did not want to trade for the longest time. So maximizing my profit means I need to have a bigger volume, a bigger position. Pros and cons is, you know, advantages is you're going to have a bigger profit if it moves in your favor. Disadvantages, obviously, is if it goes against your direction bigger loss and so that what that is what happened to the neo trade it went against me and at that time not really monitoring it so it just went against me so what happened with neo is at the open we opened at 7.8 reason why i traded neo is we have a catalyst because it had earnings this morning so what I saw was it was so strong at the open. It went from 7.8 all the way to 8.7. For a NEO, this one is actually already a big move. So we have reached the top. 
me just change my pen here. We have reached the top right here around 8.75. And it just had the pullback, broke the BWAP, broke the moving averages. And at this level, we have found the consolidation. So with NEO, what I saw was this level right here is serving as a good support. So since that one is serving as a good support, I went, I went ahead and went long here, added to my position with a stop loss in this area. Again, thesis, thought processes, I did not want to trade for the longest time, so I was building up a big position. Disadvantage is if you have a big position, then if the trade goes against you, then you're going to have a bigger loss. So that's what happened here in NEO. So I have the stop loss just below the low of the day, which I got stop out right here. I saw that we got a bounce. So first, first bottom, second bottom, third bottom here, fourth bottom. So with that fourth bottom, we have established a very strong support. So that support, I went long again, maximizing my position long again right here and the stop loss right here is just below the low of the day so i went ahead and go to the beach and do what i have to do and at the market closing time which is before four i got stop out right here now since i have a big position at this area and getting stop out right here this one made the biggest loss for the day so with that biggest loss, um, first loss is right here. Second loss is when I was expecting it to bounce off of that support. Now with trading, you definitely cannot predict 100% where the stock is going to move, right? So we always just play with probability. If you have um, higher probability that the stock is going to go to your predicted level or your predicted, um, if you're long, if it's gonna go higher or short, if it's gonna go lower, then you have a better probability of making money out of that stock. So with this, thesis is there, but it did not work out. And that's the reason why it's very important to have the stop loss because in all the trades that we get to do, we're always just going to be 50 50 probability the probability of making money gets higher if you have a solid strategy if you have a higher um loss or you know um reward to loss ratio then you know having that two to one risk to reward ratio makes it a better trade and that's the time that you get to just rinse and repeat those strategy so let's look at what coin did what coin did was i was long for coin as well long bias with coin because the time that i opened my trading station was around this time so it was around past 12 um that time it's like around six here in Hawaii, so just woke up and when I saw that it looks overextended and looks like we have found the bottom, that's the time that I went long with coin. And at this time, this is the low of the day. So this is my stop loss right there. And this is my entry to the long. So entry to the long, and then I got a hot key mistake and it stopped me out, which it worked out because if I have my initial thesis, then my stop loss would be the low of the day. But since I had this hot key mistake, I was all out here. But small loss, not the big deal. So what I saw again is we are forming a good support right here. So with that good support, I entered long, added to my position, and I got stop out right here. Then looks like we're reversing so i entered long again so looks like we're reversing so this is the short right here sorry that one was the short 
and I got stopped out right there. Now, with coin, let's see. So it gets confusing because the whole day is here. So long here, got stopped out, and then long here, got stopped out, and then long again, and partial there, did not have, I still have my positions there, and I just went all out after hours. So my profit target here initially was at 54, and this is what I was talking about. So 54 was my level here, okay? And stop loss is all the way right here. So that one was the range order that I placed before I went and go do my business. But so since for a range order, it did not touch 54 right at the penny, but it was around 53.80 that's the high of this although i was already up by 2500 since i'm not in my laptop i did not get to close my position and that's the reason why this one was still a loss although i did take some profit at the closing price but just because right here when i was trading it the first trade the second trade was a red trade I still ended up red with coin, but just like, I think less than 300 of um, red trade with coin. So that one was the coin position. Now, looking at my trading station or my laptop, um, I did wanna trade post market just because I was down for the day. Down for the day means, you know, giving, um, considering the fact that I was away from my laptop and just doing the range bound order. So if the opportunity is there that you get to see a hot spot, that it has a catalyst that is having a volume that is moving and you see your strategy on the free market as well as the post market, then that is a good opportunity to, to, to still continue trading. And that's what I saw with post trades that I did today. So let's just look in each one of them. First is CVNA. CVNA, this one was a long as well as a short. So what I saw with CVNA is we have that high of the day, 27.29, did not have the strength to even retest the levels and just went all the way down to 18.72. 18.72, that one was the level when we closed. And then what I saw here was, it looks like we have found a bottom, first bottom here, second bottom here, which is if we put a line right here, looks like we are trending higher, right? So when I saw that, this is the potential for a reversal. And that's the reason why, let me just get my pen here. That is the reason why I went long in this. So I went long right here and added to my position right there, small move, just because it was consolidating. And I saw that there are different stocks that are moving. So I did not want to, my capital there so I went all out um, so to the long I got a loss of 120 and then I did short this one very small position to the short side and let's see here this one I flipped my position to the short because of the spread so that's another thing with the post market you have to consider that the spread is going to be bigger compared to when you are trading from 9.30 to 4. Just because there's not a lot of traders, there's not a lot of volatility, so the spread is there. So imagine this one, 18.22 and 18.24, that's actually not a bad spread. It's 0 
uh, sets of the spread, which is not bad at all. But that's one of the things that you have to consider when trading post market is the spread is going to be bigger. All right, so that is the CBNA trade. So CBNA is a loss to the long side as well as a loss to the short side, but very minimal loss because I needed to control that because it's consolidating at this area right here. I did not want to tie up my capital, so I just closed my position. Next one is Tesla. Tesla is uh, lost to the long side. So Tesla, uh, what I did here is a couple of trades. First is I did made profit on Tesla short, but to the long side, it's just a small loss right there. So with Tesla, what I did was I saw that it's just zoom it out. So we get to see the whole movements of this one. I like zooming it out. So we found the high of the day for Tesla, which is 252. 252 right here. Mm. All right, 252. Once we get to found that high of the day, then we found a rejection. So got rejected, went all the way down to 245. We tested the moving average as well as your VWAP. It did not have the strength to go past the 248 and just went all down and have that low of the day, which is 242. Now, at the market, once the market closes, what I look into is the volume bar right when it closes volume bar right here when it was selling off was big um so considering that looks like tesla is starting to get weak as well as the daily looks very weak look at this one you have the higher high higher lows for a couple of days and the way to see that is if you put a line right here you can actually create a very good channel right there. Look at how perfect that is. So we're heading higher high, higher low. But if you zoom in to the daily, we close this red today. So it opened right here, 248.58, closes red for the day, 244.43, but still up by 3.9 because we have this gap right here. So you've got the gap. So it's still up by 3.8, but not as much gap as when we open. When we open in the day, that was pretty much a bigger move, but we found a rejection right there. All right, so what I saw with Tesla is we're starting to get weak. So that weakness, we have this good place where I entered short stop loss is just on top of this candlestick. So short right here, added to my position, was able to capture that move, but that move, so partial, partial, get to partial as well. Short here did work, but this one was all out. Um, then I flipped my position to the long and to the long side. This one, let's see. Yeah, long side. I think this one was the long. And then cover, long, and then cover. So this one was the messed up trade to the long side. And with that, just because I was just having very small position to the long side i have a loss of 58.94 so very small position to the long and then mcom mcom i was trying to do this one to the long side now it moved without me it was taking so long that i just needed to close my position plus this one is what we call a penny trade so this one i entered long at 0.28 and then it's not moving, so five minutes, five, five, one, two, three, four. So 20 minutes passed, and we're still under this consolidation. So I just closed my position. With a spread, I got a loss of $51. Not a big deal.
but look at the entry here, 0.28 and it's now 0.30. So we're talking about 0.02 cents, which could have been a good move. The only thing is I did not have any patience to wait for this move, but all out, not a big deal. It was a loss by 51. So the only green trades that I did was a short in Tesla, which is this move right here was able to profit on Tesla with that. And then the winning trade, the stock trade for the day is, the best trade for the day is this stock, AHI. I don't even know what company this is, but all I see was the scanner is shouting AHI having this new high of the day and look at the daily right here. So this one is the big mover and the one that saved my day. So let's see, looks like that's the high of this stock for the high. Never reached this level before. It was uh, prior to that, it is 0 0.32, 0 0.30 cents, and then was able to went all the way to 3.46 or 3.45. So it's actually up by 780%. So that's a big percentage for this one to be up. So with AHI, the one that is the, um, the trade for me for the day, and this is the reason why I was able to dig myself out of the hole because of this move. So what I saw with AHI is I saw that the scanner is calling it out that this one is having the highest move post, um, not just post market, but it was having that high of the move even at the open. But again, I was not in my trading station at this time. So post market was trying to see which one has the most volume and most volume, this one is definitely a candidate for the most volume. So what I saw was this is not the A plus setup, but once you get to see a stock that has a good catalyst as well as a mover, then you want to make profit out of those. So what I did here is, let me just zoom in. So what it did was at the open, it opened at 0.63, right? The highest it went to is here 3.26 so from 0.6 all the way to 3.26 that is such a big move imagine getting a hundred or a couple of um hundred shares and waiting for it to just go um three dollars and 26 cents that is where the big money happens but look at this this gap right here this gap right here those are the halt so what stock market, um, what happens is if the volatility is too much, then what will happen is it can get halted just because you have the imbalance of the, the buyers and the sellers. They have to match between the buyers and the sellers, so they need to halt it just so those buyers and sellers get matched. So this gap right here, that one is a halt. Well, when I saw this one at the post market, which is at 5.05, you have a huge candlestick right here. Let me just get my huge candlestick right here, which is at 2.2, went all the way to 3.11, almost a dollar move there for a penny stock. That is such a big move that when I saw that we have this pullback, that pullback right there, although we don't have much volume, but we do have a lot of total volume that is actively being traded. So when I saw that it is about to move higher than the moving average, as well as you have your um, 9 EMA right here, about to break above the 9 EMA, above this candlestick, and let's see our 15 minutes right here. Okay. So 15 minutes, not as clear, but you do have the candlestick right here, the white one. You go back 
to the five minutes, you have this candlestick starting to curl, curl up. The high of this resistance, I went long, added to my position, building a big position right here because this is a penny stock. So was able to move from 2.97 all the way to 3.22. So we're talking about 25 cents there. And with a big volume, big shares, that can be very profitable. And that's the reason why I was able to gain at least 3K with this stock. Because I maximized my share just because it's a penny stock. And we have a very great volume. Look at the volume right here. You usually don't see those volume after hours. Let's take a look right here. Look at Tesla. There's no volume there after hours. That means it can just be algorithms and a bunch of computers who are just trading um, and making the stock move. Look at Tesla. Uh, CBNA, CBNA, look at this one. No volume there. Coin, no volume there. Neo, no volume there. But with AHI, look at the volume right here. So 646,000, comparing that to 1.75 million when the market was open, that still is a pretty much big volume after hours. So when I saw that, built my position right here and was able to capture that move that gave me a 3K move. So that one is the best move mover for the day. I tried to do it again, a long one. So just a small position now, considering that we are heading to this resistance right here, which is at 3.37. So I went build a small position, added to my position, and but got stopped out right here. But you can see here, I now have a very tight stop loss because I already captured the big move right here. Also, um, I don't expect this one to just break the high of the day because we are now at the post market. So those are the things that you have to consider. Where, when is the best time to do um, breaking the high of the day, big, breaking the low of the day? Those are once the stock market opens, that is around 9.30. And that's why we have the strategy called opening range breakout, opening range breakdown at the open because Imagine all the traders, even big institutions, are flocking in into the, the gate, waiting for the gate to open. And that's why you have that surge and influx of orders of buyers and sellers just sitting there. But a post-market, post-market, pretty much people are just, or traders are just closing their position. It's a Friday night, Friday afternoon. Who wants to be sitting in their trading station and not enjoying the nice view like what we have right here. But anyway, that is the trade of the day for me. So that is the AHI trade that I gained uh, at least 3K for that. But considering the loss that I have with NEO, with COIN, a um, little bit of CDNA, Tesla, and MCOM, um, that did pull down my profit, but still ending the day of 1100 Not a home run trade, but I'll call it a day. And yeah, it's, I know it's almost seven in East Coast. It's so weird having that six hours difference. I'm like totally out of my league here. It's um, almost one in the afternoon here. Uh, very sunny and yeah very nice so that's pretty much it for me ending my friday at 1100 couple of hours of trading i do have my short video which i will add and please feel free to take a look at that i explained there about the range trading pros and cons of range trading if i can pick which one is best I would recommend if you are a day trader, stick with your computer, stick with your trading station, close your position before doing anything else. In that way, you get to see the level two as well as the tape. The thing with the range order is 
you're not able to utilize the level two as well as the tape because you are just waiting for your orders to get filled. And that's the reason why that coin did not work out because we were short by 25 cents of getting filled. But if I was in my trading station, I saw and if I saw that my tape as well as the level two does not have those orders sitting at the ask, which is at 54 and those um, tape is printing red instead of highlighted green, then that's an indicator for me to take the profit and walk away. But so it is what it is, but still ending the day with 1100. So happy for that. At least I get to enjoy the beach earlier, not right now when it's too hot outside. So I hope you guys had a green trading day and I hope you guys had an easier uh, trading day than me, but it's always fun to get some movers even after hours. So I'm really happy with what AHI gave us today and I'll be back in East Coast on Monday. So hope you guys have a good rest of the day. Have a great weekend and we'll do this again next time. Thank you so much for watching, for availing the book, as well as for availing the course. Please email me for any comments, suggestions, and also what you want us to include in the daily scanners that we have. I know some of you have reached out about Benzinga not being on. The thing with Benzinga, though, is if there's no news, they can pretty much be very quiet. So those are the days that Benzinga can be very quiet. So with that, Thank you. How do they call it? Uh, they say mahalo and I'll see you again next time. So here's the view. Just wanted to share the view that I have. All right. See you Monday. Bye.